Hey everyone, welcome back to My Apple Zone. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a tour of iOS 5 beta for the iPad. So let's get started. So I just finished installing iOS 5 beta on my iPad 2 and um, you'll notice something different about the iPad. When you start it up, um, you now see this screen. Um, so one of the main purposes of iOS 5 is to allow consumers to purchase an iPad or any iOS device, an iPhone or an iPod Touch, uh, directly out of the box and uh, not have to sync it to a computer or to sync it to iTunes. Previously when you turned on your iPad, uh, that you just purchased or any iOS device, <clears throat> you'd see the cord asking you to connect it to iTunes. With iOS 5 installed, you'll no longer have to do that because it will sync with iCloud. So if you have an Apple user ID and password, you'll simply enter that in and I'll show you how to do that. And you'll be able to activate and start using your iPad using iCloud. Now you'll still be able to sync it with iTunes with the cord if you want or connect it directly to your computer, but with iOS 5 you can finally cut the cord and do everything wirelessly through iCloud. So I just restored this iPad to, um, from iOS 4.3 to iOS 5 beta and um, so it's just like if, if I bought it right out of the box with iOS 5 and I'm going to walk you through the process of iOS 5 and do a quick review. So I've turned it on, we're going to go ahead and unlock it. And the first thing you'll notice um, is a brand new uh, screen and a brand new welcome screen. It says your ID automatically sets up iCloud, the App Store, iTunes, and more on your iPad. And it asks you to sign in with your Apple ID or create a free Apple ID. Well, I already have one. Many of you already have an Apple ID because you've got an iPhone or an iPad and you've bought products from iTunes, so you, you'd have to have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my username and password really quick, and then we'll go ahead and continue with iOS 5. Okay, so I've just finished um, entering my username and password to connect to iCloud, and as you can see right now, it says, um, store contacts, calendars, photos, music, books, apps, and more in the cloud. And then it says iCloud and it says on. I'll go ahead and click on next. Merge with iCloud. Your bookmarks on this iPad will be updated and merged with iCloud. So we'll go ahead and merge them. If you misplace your iPad, find my uh, iPad can help you find it on a map. Play a sound or display a song or a message, I should say. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Uh, diagnostics, um, it asks you if you automatically want the iPad to send diagnostic information to Apple. I'm gonna say don't send, which is the default. Click Next. And really, this is almost like the welcome screen that you would get with OS X when doing an installation because we're not syncing it with iTunes, we're actually syncing it with the cloud, so we're entering information wirelessly. Your iPad is now set up. You're ready to start using the most advanced OS ever. Start using the iPad. Um, the first thing you notice is the screen. And again, I restored this uh, from my backup. So I've got iOS 5 and all my applications and um, data backed up and restored on this iPad. And on the home screen, you'll notice, and I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so you guys have a, a better look at what's uh, on the, uh, the uh, iPad. Okay, I'm going to take you guys on a uh, really quick tour of iOS 5, and in future videos I'll focus on specific components and applications that are new to iOS 5. Um, so the first thing that you notice uh, on the uh, home screen is Newsstand. Newsstand is a uh, completely new application that was added. Uh, Newsstand allows you to download um, your magazine subscriptions to one specific area, and I don't have any magazines downloaded. Um, there's two other applications that are new, and that's uh, iMessage and Reminders, and I'll talk more about that in uh, just a minute. So the uh, biggest feature of iOS 5 is the uh, new and improved notifications, and to access notifications, you just simply swipe down to the top, and there's your notifications. I've got Mail and FaceTime notifications up right now, and they're listed in chronological order. Um, I can dismiss them by either tapping on the screen to the right or left or the bottom, or simply swiping uh, the notifications away. So I want to go into system preferences really quickly and show you um, some new uh, additions to the uh, system settings. Let's go to notifications first, and you'll see that 
Uh, there's a new section in notifications where you can set up notifications for calendar, reminders, game center, FaceTime, mail, Twitter, and the weather channel and iMessage. And you can sort them manually or by time. Let's go to general. And you'll notice there's something new in general. We have software update and I'll tap on that. It says checking for updates. The network is unavailable or too slow. Um, so this would use iCloud to uh, update um, your applications or your iOS um, system software. So we'll go back to general. Uh, you now have iTunes sync and uh, you can sync um, your library to your computer that has iTunes on it. So we'll go back to general. Uh, let's look at multi-tasking uh, gestures. Now uh, I had this installed on uh, iOS 4.3, the developer version, and uh, this is now a complete part of iOS 5. So how does multitasking gestures work? Well, you saw my previous video. You can simply squeeze, squeeze to close out an application. Uh, you can do four fingers up to get to the multitasking bar. Uh, if you go into Safari, well, actually you can go into any application. So let's go back to settings and with four fingers, you can scroll through all your applications, um, back and forth through all your applications. So that's multi-tasking uh, gestures. And let's see what else we've got. Well, let's go to uh, iCloud. You have a new uh, system setting called iCloud and you can sync uh, all of your mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, bookmarks, notes, and photo stream when photo streams up and running and then there's find my iPad. This looks a lot like uh, mobile me for those of you who have been using mobile me. Storage and backup, uh, tap on that. Total storage available, five gigabytes. You can back up to the iCloud. Um, I have that turned off right now and you can buy more storage. Let's go to Twitter. There's complete Twitter integration now. Uh, you enter your username and password and you have Twitter integration in multiple um, iOS applications. Uh, let's go to Safari. In Safari you have uh, new settings that you can set that you didn't have previously. Uh, here's message. Um, so you can set up your messaging, iMessaging, and it, mess, iMessaging works by an email address and you can set up any email address for iMessage to work and then you can communicate between different iOS devices. Music, uh, it's pretty much hasn't changed too much. Let's see what else we have here. Store, you can now automatically download uh, music apps and, and books from uh, that you've purchased on your other iOS devices, they'll automatically download to your uh, iPad or any iOS device. So for example, you buy a song on your uh, computer, on iTunes, your MacBook Pro or your iMac or whatever computer you have, uh, that song will automatically be downloaded to all your iOS devices that um, you have this option turned on. So let's go back to the home screen. And uh, let's take a look at um, Safari and the new features in Safari. Uh, up here you've got uh, tab to browsing and I can tab in between um, each uh, web page. Instead of having to go to the little uh, box up there as before and then select the web page, I can just tab right through and I can move my tabs. I can just grab this tab and hold it. So that's um, some of the, the newest features in Safari. Also, too, let's look at uh, a reader. So we'll go into first look on iOS 5 reminders. And at the top, you'll notice there is, once it loads the web page, a reader icon. You just tap on that. And now you can read the entire article without any advertisements or uh, breaks or any distractions. It makes reading articles a lot more enjoyable and I've been using this feature quite a bit. That's Reader. Tap on it again. You go back to the web page. So there's other features in Safari that I will cover in a upcoming video. So we will get out of Safari. Whoop. And let's go uh, to Mail. 
Let's take a look at new feature in mail. So uh, I've got a application or I've got a message open here. Let's create a new message. And I'm gonna just uh, just do a fake email address. Uh, and now I can take that email address, grab it, and I can move it to the CC line or the BCC line or back to the to line so that's nice no more having to erase the email address and then go back to that line to set it up you can drag and drop your email addresses to any line in the address field let's go here and do this is a test and now if I do select all I have additional features over here cut copy uh, bold italic underline and quote level so let's go to bold and italic. I can bold that text. I can italicize it, underline it, and undo all three of those. And you can set the quote level as well. Again, I'll talk more about our um, mail in an upcoming video. So that's the uh, really the newest feature in mail. So let's get out of mail. Let's look at music really quickly here. So music, you've got a whole different uh, display. It looks completely different than it did before. Albums, artists, songs. Uh, you can go to the store, the iTunes store right there. Um, so music is completely different. Go back to music. There's my library. Oh, let's go back to music. And you can you get the play, pause button, volume, airplay right there. So music has got a completely different interface as well. So let's go to um, iTunes really quickly and let's go to purchased. Where's purchased? There it is. And you can see um, all of the purchase songs over here. If you purchase items, select an artist from the left. So we'll select all songs. And over to the right, you now see the iCloud icon. This allows you to download purchase music um, right to your iOS device. So again, if you've got a song that you bought on your iPhone or on your computer and you want to download it directly to um, your iPad, you can do that by uh, clicking on the cloud button. This will also happen um, if you're using iCloud to sync your music as well. So multiple options for syncing all of your media to your uh, iOS device. Let's get out of here. So let's take a, a quick look at uh, camera and my camera roll. I've got a picture of the home screen that I took and now you can, um, you have a couple other options at the top. Uh, edit, you can edit this and you can rotate, uh, you can enhance, uh, you can uh, crop it grab the uh, crop lines there and you can crop the image and of course with the iPhone the uh, you can take photos directly from the lock screen which will be a huge improvement so let's go back to the uh, home page so that's been my uh, quick review of iOS 5 beta for the iPad 2 uh, in upcoming videos, I'll be doing uh, some more in-depth reviews of specific features and applications of iOS 5, uh, specifically Notification Center, and I'll be talking more about Reminders and iMessage and other features and applications. So if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below and um, I will be happy to answer your questions. As always, if you like the channel and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I will talk to you later.